In our last UCC video, we showed you the parts that go into a big engine. This video, we're going to go through assembly of that engine. So the first thing I do when I get an engine back in from the machine shop is to set my ring gap. Uh, every piston is different, every cylinder is different, so you can't just set a a ring in cylinder number one and think it's going to fit in cylinder number four. So when you, when you set your ring number one, you put that in a bag and label it so you make sure that ring goes back in that hole. So first thing we do is set the gaps and all the rings, both your, your top ring, your middle ring end, and you verify your oil rings are big enough. I've never yet had to make any of those larger, but always make sure they're big enough. Once the rings are set, it's time to get the crank in. Make sure your block is completely clean. Do whatever you got to do to make sure that guy is clean oil galleys, piston walls, everything clean. Then put your bearings in, let's set that crank in. Now on this particular engine, I actually went down to the machine shop and we verified every clearance on the main bearings to make sure they were perfect. That way they could hone out, if they needed to re-hone the line bore, they could do that. So this crank was perfect. So at this point now, we set the crank in, torque the main caps, make sure it spins freely, and uh, if you haven't already done so, make sure you, you check your clearances. So now that the crank is in, it's time to put our piston assembly together. For this assembly, we're using those diamond pistons with those trend DLC coated pins and also the Wagler rods. This should be a really strong assembly, transfer the power very well. So what I want to do is make sure that I get, for one, the right ring in the right hole so I get everything lined up perfectly so it's very easy uh, to do it right, very hard to make a mistake. Make sure your piston rings are very clean, that there's no burrs from the filing on them. Make sure the pistons are clean. Everything's clean and coated. Uh, the pins I coat with an assembly grease. One interesting thing that comes with these forged pistons is actual piston pin retaining clip. On a Cummins stock engine, it's a snap ring. You snap pliers and you squeeze it and that's how you, it holds the pin in the piston. On these pistons, they use a thing called a spiral lock. And these are a lot different and they don't use snap pliers. And they actually spin in there and there's actually two on each side. So there's four retaining devices on this thing. This rod and cap are machined together, so you don't ever want to mix and match this cap with this rod. This is one unit, and you shouldn't mix and match. All right, we are done. Pistons, pins, rods are mated together. Now it's time to put piston rings on the pistons. Okay. Piston rings are installed. So the bearings that we're going to use in this engine build are the Clevite. They're called an H bearing series, and I've used these for a long time. I've had real good luck with these. Uh, the, all the ones in this engine are their extra clearance. They have one that give you an extra thousandth of an inch of clearance. And so that's what we're using here to open up our uh, tolerances a little bit. In a high performance motor, this work makes a lot of sense. And so uh, that's what we're using on this engine, and it should work well. Once I have all six assemblies together, they're ready to go on the engine. Now that the pistons are going in, it's usually nice to have a buddy there to be able to receive the bottom end while the top goes in. If you don't have someone around, you're working late at night, sometimes you have to do it by yourself, which I had to do myself this time. What you gotta do is get a good ring compressor. Get a nice ring compressor and they go in real easy. Make sure your rings gaps are spaced and get those things in the hole and then guide those uh, pistons down on the crank. And once those are there, you can put the end cap on. Now at this point, I had to recheck clearances because I didn't do this in the machine shop. So I had to check clearances again on all of these rods. And it was really cool because every one of them was exactly the same. So that makes me feel good about the machine work and the quality of these regular rods that they are all identical across the board. After I had the pistons in, I put on the engine girdle. What this thing does is it ties all the main caps together in with the blocks so they can't move. And so it's a nice thing to really tie that bottom end and give it some good strength. To finish at the bottom end, we need to get the oil pan on. So before we do that, we got to put the oil pickup tube in the front and rear crank covers, because those are the front and rear part flange, I guess you will, of the oil pan. So once I got those in place, we could glue it down and put the oil pan back on. 
So the next step we gotta do is put the camshaft in. But you gotta be careful, you don't wanna rotate the motor all the way right side up because those lifters we put in earlier will fall out. So the lifters are in the block and uh, they gotta have a camshaft to hold them up. So I rotate the engine just upwards so it's vertical. Then I can drop that camshaft down. This, uh, before you put the camshaft in, make sure to put the gear on. And so uh, put that gear on, drop that camshaft down, and then we can uh, continue with the assembly. After the camshaft is in, now we're to just the front end and top end assembly. Uh, we gotta put the head on. The head's the one you saw us firing in that other video. We did some firings on that head. So that guy's ready to go on. We got the valve springs in, the valves are in. We made all our modifications to this head. Then we slap it down on this engine and get it torqued down. On this particular engine, we were using some Harlan Sharp uh, rockers in their own custom stand, and we modified the stands to make them even more robust and less likely to move in the head. And once we got those in place, we noticed we had a few problems we had to address. We actually had to take the head back off. We had to make some more clearance for these push rods. Our push rods are huge. They're 9 16 in diameter. They're gigantic. So we had actually had to go in the head and drill out and dremel some extra clearance so those push rods didn't hit the, the side of the wall that they were in. And so we took the head off, I think, two or three different times, checking clearances, making sure we had plenty of clearance there. Once we had that done, everything moved freely and smooth, and then we just torqued the head on, set the valve lash, and we're ready to get this thing started. <laughs> Once the engine assembly was complete, we stuck it back in the truck. Got the turbos on, set the injection timing. Uh, to start it off, I had it at 25 degrees. Fuel lines, injectors, everything in there, and we started up. We're really happy. Broke the cam in, that went really, really well. And then we checked lash, make sure didn't, nothing went wrong, and lash was good. Did a hot retort and uh, reset lash again. And now the motor's ready. We've got a break in, an oil change, it's ready to do some runs in the dyno. Still an engine break, and we're not trying to set any world records here. We have a, a race coming up in a couple days we want to attend. We want to test the engine, the transmission, a lot of things we've got to shake down because it's a brand new build again. And so we're just looking to make a modest horsepower level to be hopefully competitive. We're thinking around 14 to 1500 horsepower should get us there. So we're, this purpose of this dyno tuning is just to set the power number at that level. On the dyno, we started out our first pull at zero increased fuel. That means the minimum amount of fuel our pump can put out. And at that level, it did right around 1150-ish horsepower. We were up or down 20 horsepower to turn the run. So minimum fuel, least amount of power possible, slightly over 1100. So after those first few pulls, we knew we needed more. So we jumped the fuel up to about 680 cc's. Just wanted to see where that took us. So 680 cc's, that put us like a 1,650 horsepower, give or take. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it's like, woo! That's awesome. The real number is right at 1,600. And it's still climbing? I gotta come see this. And then you did that extra little hoop yeah. on the way back, and yeah. that's why I had that little yeah. up on the bottom. It's a little bit more aggressive than you want to do for this run. Still breaking it a bunch of stuff, so let's back her down a little bit. Let's go to 15 PSI. Okay. What does that give you if you want 15? 20 gives us 680. 10 gives us 520, so I'm thinking right around 600. We ended up going down to right at 600 cc's of fuel. That put us right around 1450, 1500 in there. So that was a good, a good, we thought, competitive number that we could go race with. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're new around here, please subscribe, hit that like button, give us a comment, we want to talk with you. In our next video, we're taking this beast to the track for its first runs down the drag strip. This is just a shakedown for this engine. We're hoping to be competitive. We're not going with anticipating blowing anybody away. We just want to see if the tranny is going to work like we think it will. See if the engine is going to work like we think it will. Nothing ever works like we think it will. So hopefully whatever we find, we can easily fix and uh, we can get ready for the big show in May. Thanks, see you next time.